theory started with uh, um, uh, ecologists uh, who were uh, essentially interested in uh, explaining uh, uh, animal behavior, okay, or say behavior in uh, economic, uh, um, uh, say in in, uh, in in biology, okay, and um, so. Essentially, the idea is that um, um, uh, if you, the, the main question is uh, why do you find a certain type of uh, behaviors in, uh, um, in an animal population or in a population of uh, uh, individuals of a given species? Uh, typical behaviors are uh, like uh, typically mating behavior. So, um, uh, you know, often uh, in the animal world, you, you find uh, uh, animals who are uh, fighting uh, for, uh, um, for females, okay, for mating. And um, and essentially, or, or there are other uh, type of uh, um, uh, behaviors uh, which are uh, 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 that, that are very uh, particular. And, and the idea is that uh, uh, if one particular type of behavior is uh, uh, a behavior uh, that is uh, uh, most effective for reproduction, for uh, uh, passing on the genes of an individual to the next generation, then uh, evolution uh, will uh, select uh, for, this, uh, um, for this behavior. So essentially the idea is that you think uh, uh, the main issue, the main object uh, in uh, evolution is uh, what is called fitness. And uh, uh, you think uh, at fitness uh, as being a, a function of both uh, the genes and of uh, uh, behavior. Uh, so, oh, sorry, uh, I think I should start uh, uh, recording also. Um, ah, okay, so uh, uh, registration start. Okay, so, um, now there is a there is an issue of uh, uh, so let's make an example. So uh, a typical example, uh, if uh, if you if you look at uh, the um, mantis. Uh, so um, the mantis is an insect, and there is a, a female and a male, and uh, when the uh, male meets uh, the female, essentially they uh, mate. And then uh, after uh, uh, mating, the male uh, lets uh, himself uh, be eaten up by the female. And you would ask, I mean, in principle, you would say, well, this is not a particularly uh, 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 successful strategy for, uh, for a male mantis because essentially uh, every time he meets, he mates, uh, he, he's, uh, he's going to die. But actually this is a, a very successful uh, strategy for the genes of the male mantis, because in this way, uh, the female does not have to go and look for food and uh, uh, instead, uh, she can uh, uh, she can uh, um, uh, just uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, stay where, where she is and uh, and and lay the eggs uh, and uh, and um, with the resources uh, uh, so that uh, she doesn't have to worry about uh, uh, getting food. Now. Um, um, so what this uh, uh, essentially, um, um, so what this essentially uh, says is that what is essential is that uh, in evolution, 
the game is not played by the individuals, but it's played by the genes. Okay, so we have a question on, uh, do male mantis uh, know that by experiments uh, of other male mantis? No, I mean, uh, the, uh, I mean the, the real issue is that uh, um, uh, for, uh, uh, for a male mantis, it is very hard to find a female mantis. So in his lifetime, uh, the, the, the chances of uh, meeting uh, uh, a female mantis uh, are uh, very small. So that when uh, he meets uh, a female mantis, that is uh, his only occasion to pass on his genes. And, um, and this is why this, uh, this strategy is, uh, um, is uh, successful. But somehow this strategy is uh, uh, encoded in, uh, uh, in, in the genes, or this behavior is encoded in the genes or in some other form. I mean, maybe it's encoded in uh, epigenetic mark markers uh, of uh, the genes that are passed uh, from one mantis to the other. But, uh, but in the animal world, you, you find a lot of this type of uh, uh, strange behavior. So uh, another one uh, which is discussed uh, a lot uh, in this uh, video of uh, John Minor Smith uh, is uh, um, the one of uh, fighting and uh, display by animals. So that essentially um, uh, the the males uh, who uh, mate with the female are those that uh, um, uh, endure most in fighting uh, with other uh, males. So there is this game that is played within the population uh, that, uh, um, um, that also has this uh, feature of passing on uh, as, as this uh, 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 um, function of passing on most effectively the genes of uh, the, um, uh, the strongest individuals. Okay, so, uh, so then how do you, uh, how do we uh, discuss this uh, in terms of, uh, um, um, in terms of uh, evolutionary game theory? What is the idea of uh, evolutionary game theory? So the idea is that of uh, defining uh, in a game what is called uh, an evolutionarily stable strategy. So, or ESS. Now, what is an evolutionarily stable strategy? Well, you think uh, about uh, a population that uh, is uh, of individuals, uh, and these individuals uh, are uh, playing a particular, uh, um, uh, so uh, they are interacting. I mean, and this is, uh, um, you, you think uh, that uh, at any time T, uh, two of these individuals uh, meet at random and they play a game. And each of them uh, uh, plays a particular strategy. And so, and uh, uh, if you let the system uh, evolve in this way, what you will find out, uh, I mean, the idea is that what you will find out is that the strategies that uh, uh, survive along this uh, series of uh, random encounters uh, within the population are those uh, that are essentially uh, the most successful ones, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> so the idea is that uh, uh, if uh, this, uh, uh, if, so an evolutionarily stable strategy is a strategy such that uh, 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 if, uh, uh, all the individuals of a population play this strategy. And uh, at a certain point, uh, you have uh, the appearance of some uh, uh, mutants that uh, uh, play a different strategy. So, uh, 
then uh, this mutant uh, will not invade the whole population. Okay, so essentially the the, the mutant the the payoff of the mutants playing against uh, uh, the the other um, um, uh, the other individuals will be smaller than uh, the payoff uh, of uh, the individuals among themselves. Okay. So uh, are there any questions uh, about this? Uh, Professor. Okay. Yes. Can you repeat how you introduce the mutants? So the mutant uh, is uh, just uh, a, um, any other strategy that uh, may appear because of random mutations. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So it's uh, but the, but the the issue is that uh, at the beginning you have an homogeneous population, uh, and um, at a certain point you have a mutation in this homogeneous population. And so there is a small fraction of individuals uh, in this uh, population that plays a different strategy. And the question is, uh, will this uh, uh, small fraction will be able to take over or not? Okay, and you have an evolutionary stable strategy if this does not happen, okay? Whatever is the mutation. Okay, so uh, I was asked also to explain better what is fitness. So fitness uh, is generally uh, defined as uh, the uh, expected number uh, of uh, um, as the expected number of offsprings uh, at the next generation. So essentially of offsprings uh, that reach uh, uh, um, reproductive age. Okay, so essentially uh, a species or a strategy that confers a higher fitness will uh, have a population that grows faster than another with a, which has a lower fitness. Okay, so, uh, so uh, can any two meet uh, twice or more? Uh, yes, they can. So, in general, uh, when we discuss evolutionary game theory, we think uh, at, uh, uh, at the limit uh, of an infinitely large population. So that uh, uh, every time you pick two individuals at random, but the chances that uh, you pick two individuals at random uh, uh, at different times is, is very small. Uh, so could you explain a little bit more about strategy in this specific uh, case? So strategy in this case is uh, just uh, a behavior, okay? So the mantis uh, uh, study you can think of uh, uh, in the population of mantis, there are some males uh, that have this uh, particular behavior that they let uh, themselves be eaten up by the female and, someone, uh, and some uh, uh, males that do not. Okay, so these are two different strategies. And the point is that uh, those that uh, do not let themselves uh, be eaten by the female have a lower fitness uh, than the others. And so this is why we don't observe them uh, in, in the population, okay? Uh, is the ESS uh, defined within the species uh, or can we express it among species as well? Okay, so in the real situation, uh, a species uh, interacts both with uh, within the species and uh, with uh, other species. But uh, uh, essentially, if we are interested, uh, and essentially fitness also depends on uh, how you are efficient, uh, for, for example, in uh, predation, so in predating over other species, or how you are efficient in escaping predators that uh, uh, predate on your species, okay? But here we only consider uh, um, uh, 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 fitness. So, but this, this in some sense, uh, um, 
say, for example, if you consider different species, uh, this is a, a different game. And here we are only talking about uh, uh, games that are played between individuals of the same species, okay? Okay, so um, uh, in terms of competition for common resources uh, beyond just, okay, yes. Common resources are also another issue. Yes. Yes, please. Uh, uh, is it possible in our system, we have a three ESS. Uh, uh, yesterday you said uh, in our system, we have a three national uh, uh, if I, Sorry. Uh, uh, is it possible in our system we have a, a one um, a bigger one, and for example, two or three ESS we have? Yes, it is possible. It is possible to have uh, in the same game more than one uh, ESS. So what you, uh, for example, yesterday, uh, uh, okay, now we are going to discuss uh, more formally in terms of uh, uh, game theory. But uh, yes, it is uh, definitely the case that you can have uh, more than uh, uh, one uh, ESS. Any other question? Okay, so... Um, uh, Very good. Um, okay, so uh, how do you uh, define uh, evolutionarily uh, stable strategy in a particular uh, uh, game uh, context? Okay, so. Um, so the idea uh, in, in a game is that uh, essentially you have a, a payoff of uh, uh, a particular individual i uh, that is playing uh, with strategy si against uh, uh, the opponents, okay? And uh, so we are going to think about uh, the fitness of individual i that is playing a, a strategy SI in a, a, a particular uh, population, okay, as, a, um, as the sum, as essentially the expected value of the payoff that he may get playing with op opponents that uh, uh, play a certain uh, strategy a certain opponent strategy, where this uh, is the uh, fraction of uh, uh, individuals uh, that play strategy S. Okay? So this is uh, essentially uh, the, the, the idea. And, uh, and essentially, uh, so the, um, if you have, uh, um, uh, so let's, let's, for example, uh, uh, make uh, um, an example. Uh, um, so let's take uh, uh, this uh, example, which I discussed in the notes where essentially, which is essentially a prisoner's dilemma, where you have two strategy for player one, which is uh, say, uh, here I call them S and L. And uh, one and eight, eight and one, and three and three. Okay, so in, in this case, uh, well, you can study the Nash equilibrium of uh, this uh, uh, start of this game. And what you can easily find is that essentially the best response for player two, uh, uh, if player one plays S is uh, is eight uh, and uh, is is L, 
and it's L also if you place uh, L, and the same is true for also uh, player one. So that uh, this is uh, the Nash equilibrium, no? It's the Nash equilibrium of uh, the prisoner's dilemma, no? So now we can ask, uh, uh, so is uh, uh, L an evolutionally uh, stable strategy? And uh, in order to do this, uh, uh, you will have to uh, think about uh, a mixed strategy uh, where essentially uh, uh, you have, uh, now you change your population and you introduce a small fraction, say epsilon of uh, uh, people uh, that of individuals that play the strategy S, okay? So, uh, uh, so this uh, mixed strategy will uh, play uh, strategy L with probability or say, um, with probability one minus epsilon, you have a fraction one minus epsilon of individuals of type L, and uh, you have a fraction S of uh, uh, individuals uh, that play S, okay? Uh, very good. So now, uh, you, what you have to do is to look at what is the payoff of one individual that is playing L in this modified uh, uh, population with the mutants. So the mutants are these guys here. Uh, and compare it with, uh, uh, with the payoff of the mutants. The mutants are the S in this population, okay? So, and if you do the math, uh, this is uh, very easy. You find that this is three plus three X. Whereas uh, here you find uh, one plus uh, uh, four X. Okay, so you see that uh, the uh, payoff of the resident population is larger than uh, uh, the payoff of the mutants. So in this situation, the fitness of the mutants will be smaller than the uh, fitness of the resident population. And, uh, uh, and the mutant will not invade. Ah, sorry. Uh, here, I'm not using X, I'm using Epsilon. Thanks, uh, Dionessa. Okay. So uh, for example, if you want to compute uh, 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 this one, uh, you have, uh, that is eight uh, times Epsilon uh, plus uh, uh, three times uh, one minus Epsilon. Sorry, times one minus Epsilon. And then, uh, you get uh, this uh, uh, number here. Okay, so. Um, Excuse uh, me. Yeah. Uh, can you explain uh, how, how you calculate uh, these uh, by uh, having this um, one minus epsilon and epsilon? I didn't quite get it. Uh, okay, so this, uh, so U1 of L and Sigma, so you want to compute what is the payoff yes. of uh, player one uh, against uh, a, a, a population that uh, uh, is playing S. So, so the, this is, uh, so you have a fraction epsilon of people playing S and a fraction one minus epsilon of people playing L. Yes. Okay? Yes. So then uh, uh, this means uh, that your payoff will be, this payoff will be eight uh, times uh, uh, epsilon, okay? Okay. Because you are playing L. Yes. Uh, plus three times one minus epsilon. Uh-huh, okay? yes, yes, yes. And so, yes, yeah, so, sorry. And then uh, uh, what you have is actually uh, three plus five. Five epsilon. epsilon. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, very good. So um, now this, uh, uh, so in this case, uh, so sorry. sorry.
Sorry, I cannot hear very well. Sorry, I cannot. There's some unexpected noise, sir. You can mute him. Okay. Uh, um, okay, let's see. Uh, okay. Very good. Okay, so um, then the question uh, that arises here is uh, uh, so. Um, so is uh, so you can ask the same question, no? So you can ask uh, is uh, uh, is uh, uh, S uh, uh, an evolution stable strategy, and uh, you can do the math, and you you can see that uh, it is not okay, because uh, a, a, a population of uh, individuals playing S can be invaded by. Uh, uh, a small fraction of individuals playing L. And this is because L is a dominant strategy. Okay, so the question then uh, uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, 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 a population that plays an evolutionary stable strategy uh, equal uh, uh, to a Nash equilibrium, or a population that is playing a, a Nash equilibrium, so uh, if you have a population that uh, uh, plays an evolutionary stable strategy, then uh, uh, this must be a Nash equilibrium. Okay, so the converse uh, instead, uh, as we will see, is not true. Okay, so um, if you have a, um, uh, a um, and, and say in order to see this, uh, we can analyze uh, a, a different game. You can take uh, this game here for four, zero, four, four, zero, three, three. This is similar to the uh, other game. And uh, now if you look at what is the best response uh, of uh, player one uh, when player two plays L, whether it is this one or this one. And uh, if it is playing R, then it is this one. And you can do the same for uh, uh, the um, player two. And uh, so what you find is that uh, here there are two Nash equilibria. One is this uh, and one is this, okay? However, uh, if you... Uh, if you do the math, you will find that, uh, say, uh, sorry, um, R, R, uh, so R actually, uh, R uh, is uh, an evolutionally stable strategy because essentially it cannot be invaded, but L is uh, uh, not an evolutionary stable strategy, okay? And uh, you just have to do the math. So, so this, is, uh, uh, this is a Nash equilibrium, uh, but the strategy that are played at the Nash equilibrium are not uh, evolutionary stable strategies, okay? Are there uh, uh, questions? Uh, yes, Professor. So uh, for the prisoner's dilemma, uh, if you could go yeah. back just one slide. So we could see that the payoff for uh, one of the persons not cooperating is eight versus one. So that's a very large payoff. And if you calculate, so the E, the uh, U1 of S sigma. So what, what happens if, um, when we're looking at whether S is uh, an evolutionary stable strategy, you could see that it's um, not, for all values of epsilon, you get something no, like yes, 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 three minus it's x. A, so I'm um, epsilon is small. So you okay. want to understand uh, whether you have a mutation, you have uh, one individual uh, in a large population that has a new uh, gene, which is a mutant, 
and you want to see whether this takes over. So epsilon is mole. Okay. Yes, but it turns. But if you calculate u one, uh, for the two cases, you get like uh, that the difference between uh, u one by by a mutant and u one by a resident using always s. It's like three minus x. So that's positive for all values of x. Okay, um, so let's do this. So now you are saying, so let you, you want to see whether, uh, say, S is uh, an evolution stable strategy, right? Yes, yes. So essentially, we are going to the, the population with the mutant uh, will be S uh, uh, with probability one minus L, epsilon, and L uh, with probability epsilon, okay? Okay, then uh, uh, what we have to do is to uh, compute uh, um, uh, this uh, U of S against this uh, uh, sigma. Okay, and uh, yes, now we have that this is uh, uh, the other way around. So this is one minus epsilon and this is epsilon, okay? And uh, so, uh what is the payoff of uh, uh, player one if plays s uh, against uh, s so it's five times one minus epsilon uh, uh, plus uh, uh, one times epsilon right is it okay whereas uh, for if uh, uh, a, a, a Mutant, uh, the, the payoff of the mutant uh, will be eight uh, times one minus epsilon plus three times epsilon. Okay, so this is uh, uh, five minus four epsilon, four epsilon, and this is uh, uh, eight minus uh, five epsilon. Okay, so uh, if epsilon is small. No? Then uh, this uh, uh, the resident population, let's say the, the, the uh, S uh, people, will have a smaller payoff than uh, the mutant, and so the mutant will take over. Okay, are you with me, Carlo? Yes, 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 yes. I'm here. Yes, so exactly. Okay. So you so you get a three minus uh, epsilon is the difference between U1 L sigma and U1 S sigma. So that means yeah. that it holds for all epsilon. Um, yeah. Could but, you give an interpretation of that perhaps? No, I mean, uh, what you get is only small epsilon. Okay, so. Oh, okay. Uh, but in this case, uh, say, uh, it is a very stable. Uh, um, okay. Uh, Nash equilibrium. Okay, it's a very a very stable strategy. Yeah. Okay, but it's also but it, it's also dependent on the coefficients in the matrix, right? Because yeah, of course. If you everything get... depends. Uh, everything depends on the yeah. coefficients. Okay, okay, thank you, thank yeah. you, thank you. Okay, so the next thing uh, uh, that I want to discuss is that uh, uh, so you would think uh, that then uh, well uh, evolution uh, should always. Uh, um, uh, uh, lead uh, to one strategy or the other, but uh, this is not so. Uh, uh, in uh, this is not uh, necessarily so. So, uh, and the idea uh, in order to see this, uh, um, uh, let's consider uh, the another game. Which is uh, a, a game uh, which is uh, very uh, popular in uh, uh, this um, evolutionary game theory, which is the Hauptdorf game. Uh, Hauptdorf game. So the idea is that uh, every individual can play Hawk or Dove. Huh? So this is typically uh, in an animal conflict uh, between two individuals in an animal population. Then uh, uh, the question is uh, how aggressive uh, you want to be. And uh, 
the idea is that if you are very aggressive, you play as a hawk. If you are uh, not aggressive, you play as a dove. And if you are a hawk uh, and you meet another hawk, then uh, essentially the fight is going to last for long and uh, maybe uh, there's going to be some injury. Okay, so uh, we will put a payoff of minus one for a hawk that meets a, a hawk. Instead, if a hawk meets a dove, then uh, the hawk will win uh, very easily and the dove will get zero, okay? So the, the idea, I mean, if you look at uh, the video of the lecture of uh, uh, John Minor Smith, I mean, the, the idea is that there is a resource uh, and uh, that, that has to be split uh, and, uh, and also there is the a cost of fighting. And so a dove will not pay any cost of fighting, but will also not get any, any resource. Okay, and so uh, uh, here you get uh, uh, the opposite of uh, of, um, of of uh, of this. And uh, uh, if a dove meets a dove, instead uh, they just share the resource, and so they uh, have one and one. Okay, so now if you do the uh, uh, if you look for a Nash equilibria then uh, the Nash equilibria are either when a hawk meets a dove huh, or when a dove meets a hawk, okay? So there are two Nash equilibria, uh, but uh, in the Nash equilibria, the two players play different games, okay? And actually, uh, if you uh, look at this game, there is also a, a, a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium which is essentially uh, playing uh, half of the time as a hawk and half of the time as a dove, okay? I'll give you as an exercise to, uh, to prove this. Okay, so you can uh, uh, prove that uh, this uh, uh, sigma uh, is uh, an evolutionally stable strategy. Well, and why is this so? Well, uh, imagine that you are in a population where half of the people is a hawk and half of the people is a dove. Now imagine that uh, you are a hawk and you decide to become a dove. Then uh, the chances that you are going to uh, meet uh, um, a hawk increases. Uh, sorry. Uh, so your, your payoff. So with probability uh, one half minus epsilon, uh, you will uh, 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 meet a hawk. And with the probability one half plus epsilon, you will meet uh, uh, a dove, okay? So if you uh, switch uh, uh, to a dove, so if you have, uh, uh, say, epsilon more doves, so then uh, the payoffs of those uh, of, 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 of those uh, will be equal to um, uh, with probability one half uh, uh, minus epsilon, you will meet a hawk and then uh, uh, you will have uh, zero. And with probability one half plus epsilon, you will meet uh, uh, a dove and you will get one, okay? If instead you are a hawk, then uh, uh, with probability one half minus epsilon, you will meet a hawk, which is minus one. And with probability uh, one half plus epsilon, you will meet a dove and you will get two, okay? So uh, here, uh, if you see, then uh, um, uh, this is uh, one half, uh, uh, plus uh, uh, three half times epsilon. And so you see that uh, hawk get a higher payoff than doves, okay? So in a population where uh, uh, there are slightly more doves, the payoff of hawks is larger, which means uh, that hawks will reproduce more than doves, okay? And 
so this uh, logic is uh, uh, say is a little bit uh, the same as the one by which uh, in animal population typically you have a sex ratio which is uh, one half one half. Okay, or in human population you have a sex ratio one half one half because essentially if you have uh, a, a uh, more uh, females than uh, males, uh, then uh, females, uh, males uh, will pass more likely their genes than uh, females. Okay. So, do you have any questions on this? Professor, no? one question. Yes, please. Uh, so, still in the idea of the epsilon. Uh, the epsilon must be small, but is there a threshold where the epsilon increases and then uh, the gain, the, the certain strategy is not, it's not a ESS anymore? Is there a threshold? Of ah, yes, you, you can, uh, if you do this uh, calculation, you can uh, figure it out. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, sort of uh, easy, no? Uh, you, you do this calculation and, uh, you you can find out uh, easily, no? Okay. Other questions? Okay, if not, uh, so let's uh, uh, go back and uh, uh, discuss uh, uh, more uh, the mathematics uh, of uh, this uh, evolutionary game theory. And this is essentially what is called uh, uh, the replicator dynamics. So uh, replicator dynamics uh, is um, uh, essentially a way to put uh, all these uh, uh, considerations into differential equation for the populations of individuals, okay? So again, uh, we think uh, there is a, a population of individuals uh, and in this uh, population there are, each individual is playing a particular strategy S, okay? Or is of type S. And uh, the fitness uh, of these individuals uh, is a number Fs, okay? And uh, so essentially if Ns is the number of individuals uh, um, at, uh, of type S in this population, then uh, uh, the, the, the evolution of, of the number of individuals is given by the fitness uh, times Ns. So this tells you that essentially the fitness uh, is the how fast uh, uh, species S uh, reproduces, okay? So essentially if uh, this is all uh, that is, going, that is uh, going on and if the fitness does not depend on, on uh, uh, who you meet, uh, I mean, these, these are not interacting, then uh, if you plot the log of uh, and S uh, versus T, you just get the straight line, okay? And then uh, uh, if you have uh, uh, a different type of uh, individuals, uh, the red individuals, uh, they will have a different fitness and they will go with a different weight, okay? And uh, if you have another type of individuals, uh, maybe they will grow at a different rate, okay? So what you, what you see is that then uh, uh, if you look at uh, uh, the fraction of individuals uh, of type S uh, that are there at a given time, then uh, it is clear that uh, uh, over time this will be dominated by the uh, type of individuals that grows faster, okay? And uh, essentially you can write down uh, uh, an equation for uh, uh, the xs in dt and uh, figure out that this is going to be um, equal to uh, xs times the fitness minus the average fitness in the population. 
Okay. So if your fitness uh, is uh, larger than the average fitness of the population, you are going to your fraction of the fraction of individuals we, of this type will increase. If it is lower, then it will uh, it will decrease. Okay. Uh, is this uh, clear for uh, everyone? Okay, so I assume it is uh, clear for uh, all of you. Okay, now uh, let's now instead assume that uh, uh, agents, uh, uh, these individuals are interacting. They interact with each other. And so the payoff of an individual uh, actually depends on uh, uh, who, uh, on what the other individuals uh, are doing, okay? So uh, then uh, um, uh, we have uh, uh, that, uh, um, so the fitness of an individual at time uh, T in a population is going to be equal to uh, the average payoff that uh, is going to get uh, in this population um, uh, if he plays this game with strategy S uh, against uh, opponents that play strategy S prime drawn at random uh, from uh, the from the population. Okay. And then uh, uh, in this replicator, so it's a question, in this replicator dynamics, individuals are divided into types based on what strategy they use. However, what about individual with mixed strategy? So yes, so in this case, uh, uh, I'm uh, thinking uh, uh, about the situation where each individual is uh, um, in the population, is playing a mixed strategy, is committed uh, to one strategy, okay? And uh, you have, you can also think of individuals uh, that can uh, randomize their behavior, but for simplicity, I'm just thinking about uh, individuals uh, who are either oaks or doves, okay? And uh, excess is just, uh, so in some sense, the mixed strategy is a result uh, of an average over the population. Okay, very good. So uh, uh, are we supposing the total population uh, uh, of NS is uh, fixed? No, we don't need to uh, assume that the total population is fixed. Indeed, uh, in this case, uh, you can see that uh, the, the total population uh, will also increase uh, in time in this particular case, okay? Okay, so if the fitness is defi defined in this way, uh, then uh, 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 we, uh, we can write down what is uh, the equation for the fraction of individuals that play strategy S uh, of type S in the population. It is just uh, the equation uh, that I wrote before. It's just uh, uh, that uh, the fitness of individual type S is just uh, this one, uh, u1 of s, s prime times x of s prime. And the average fitness now uh, is a sum of s prime, s double prime of x of s double prime, u1 of s double prime, s prime, x, s prime. Okay. So this is called uh, uh, the uh, replicator. dynamics. And, uh, and essentially, uh, what well, you can, uh, uh, so it's one form of replicator dynamics. So in general, uh, you can think uh, that uh, you can have a different uh, relation between fitness and payoff. Uh, and uh, the different model that have uh, 
different, make different assumptions, but this is the simplest uh, uh, assumption uh, that you can make, okay? Now, uh, the, uh, let's see uh, what is the behavior of uh, this uh, equation in simple, uh, say, two by two uh, games. So symmetric two by two games uh, are like the games that we have studied. Uh, there are uh, just two players uh, and uh, uh, two strategies. Then uh, uh, in every case, you can write these games uh, in, a, um, in a form uh, that is uh, say uh, with the uh, uh, payoffs that are A11, A12, a21, A22. These are the payoff uh, for uh, this is strategy one and strategy two. And uh, these are the payoff for player one. And uh, the payoff of player two are just uh, the uh, transpose of this matrix. Okay. Okay. Uh, very good. So uh, now, uh, if you uh, write down uh, this uh, uh, equation, I cut a little bit uh, uh, this uh, story short because it, we just have five minutes. So uh, if you write down uh, uh, the these uh, dynamics, uh, replicator dynamics for this case, uh, well, first of all you can say that x1 is just equal to x and x2 is equal to one minus x. Because notice that uh, uh, the by replicator dynamic by sum over x, uh, dxs uh, divided by dt, then I get zero. So because uh, uh, when I sum over s uh, here, you see that uh, uh, the uh, sum of S here gives me just the average payoff. Uh, so um, when I sum over S here, I get exactly this term here. And when I sum over S this term, well, this is a constant and I just get one here. So essentially, if the population is, is normalized and keeps being normalized by these uh, dynamics. Okay, so uh, the equation that we get for x is just that uh, dx dt is equal to x times one minus x times uh, uh, a constant a plus b times x, okay? And then, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, you can study these dynamics uh, very easily uh, if you, uh, write dx uh, dt as a function of x, okay? Now, for example, if you have uh, that a and uh, b are positive, then uh, you see that uh, uh, dx dt is uh, also positive, okay? It is also non-negative. So you will get something uh, that goes like this. Okay, and so this is the dynamics uh, by which uh, if uh, your x uh, is at this point at some time, the x dt is positive, so you will move uh, in this other, in this uh, uh, in the right, uh, right direction. And essentially you will get uh, to this point. So this uh, x uh, equal one will be the evolutionally stable strategy, okay? Now, depending on the values of A and B, you can have uh, either this situation or the situation where uh, if A and B are both negative, uh, then uh, uh, you can have uh, this uh, uh, behavior here, but you can also have uh, a behavior like uh, this one. And the red case will, would be one where the ESS, uh, the evolution stable strategy is here. Uh, in this uh, uh, green case, you will have that the evolution and stable strategy is here because uh, if you are on this side, you move on the right. If you are on this side, you move on the left because the x dt is negative. 
but also you can have a, a situation like uh, like this one, okay, where essentially you have two uh, stable points, okay, two ESS, which are this one and uh, this one. So essentially, uh, the point I want to make is that uh, the asymptotic uh, behavior of uh, these um, replicator dynamics. Uh, so uh, if you take the limit uh, as t goes to infinity of these uh, replicator dynamics, then uh, you get uh, this evolutionary stable static. Okay. So questions. So we have a, one question in the chat. Uh, okay, no, no question. Is everything clear? So uh, if not any 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 way you can find all these things uh, in the uh, on the website, as well as a, a remarkable lecture of uh, John Minor Smith, uh, who is a uh, um, one of the founding fathers of evolutionary uh, game theory. And essentially, uh, the other thing that uh, he um, discusses is uh, also the issue of evolution of, uh, cooperator, of cooperation. So the other issue that you can ask yourself is, why is it that uh, in a context like a prisoner's dilemma, so you, um, you see uh, a lot uh, more cooperation in society than you would expect, okay? And uh, so the, 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 the reason uh, for this uh, is that essentially uh, in, uh, when they, as we have seen uh, yesterday, is that uh, when uh, interaction is repeated, uh, then uh, cooperation becomes a uh, uh, Nash equilibrium of a repeated game. But you can ask yourself, uh, well, is the uh, strategy that we discussed yesterday, this uh, um, trigger strategy, an evolutionarily stable strategy? And the answer is no. And the answer is, uh, uh, well, when you ask yourself about uh, um, uh, evolutionary stable strategy in a repeated uh, game, uh, because the strategy space is so large, then you have to, um, uh, I mean, it's, it's a very difficult question. So what Robert Axelrod did at a certain point, uh, was to uh, set up a tournament, a tournament between strategy playing the repeated uh, prisoner's dilemma. And what he found out uh, is that uh, uh, even in a, a finitely repeated game, there is a very simple strategy, which is evolutionarily stable. Although it is not a strategy that you will find uh, by backward propagation, as we saw yesterday, but it's evolutionarily stable. And the strategy goes, uh, is called uh, tit for tap, and goes like uh, uh, the following. So uh, you start cooperating, and then at every point in time, you do what your opponent did uh, the previous time, okay? So if your opponent uh, also starts cooperating, uh, then you cooperate. And then uh, this means that uh, if uh, your opponent also plays tit for tat, uh, then you will cooperate forever, okay? So if your opponent at a certain point uh, uh, defects, uh, then you will defect uh, after. But if, you're, uh, if that was just, uh, uh, a mistake, so your, your opponent starts cooperating again, then uh, uh, you also start cooperating again. Okay, so this is the difference with the, between uh, with trigger strategies. The tit for tat also uh, as a um, feature of uh, forgiving or uh, misbehave, I will punish you as long as you misbehave. 
but after that we will continue uh, cooperating. And this is uh, uh, an evolution. You can uh, find out that, uh, well, what Axel found is that this tit for tat was the best strategy, was winning against any other strategy. It was not uh, invadable uh, if you have a population of players that play tit for tat, it cannot be invaded by any other uh, strategy. So I think uh, uh, we need to stop here. And um, uh, if there are no questions. Are there questions? No questions. OK, so let's take a, a, a 15 minutes break before uh, um, uh, before uh, going back uh, to before, before the next lecture. Thank you very much. <laughs>